Hey everyone, Doug here with Doug Johnson's Productions, Orem, Utah. I wanted to introduce you to a brand new tool that I've created, made available in the form of a website. Uh, this tool allows you to manipulate 3D lookup tables, or LUTs as we like to call them, uh, using mathematical operations. So it uh, has the features to combine LUTs, uh, change the intensity of the LUT, and then there's another one which I'm going to create an entirely separate video on, which is matching the look of two different cameras. I'll actually give you, show you a practical uh, application of that and in a way that I've used it uh, myself in, in, in part of my, as part of my work. Uh, so the website, LUTMath.com, L-U-T-M-A-T-H.com, it's completely free to use. There's no registration required. There's no payments required to use the, use the functionality of the site. It's just a free service that I'm making available uh, I do have a donate button there, so if you find it useful and it saves you some time, I'd appreciate a donation, but it's absolutely not required nor even expected. So with that, let's just jump right in and take a look and see what this site has to offer. So after you perform a very quick validation that you are indeed a human, uh, this is the site you'll, as you'll see it. So uh, it, at the top here, we've got three different modes that the site can operate in. In this video, I'm really only going to cover modify intensity and then merge two LUTs. Uh, I have a separate video on camera matching because that one is a little bit more in-depth and it does require a little bit of preparation ahead of time. Alright, so to select the mode, you just click on it. So, and, and then clicking on that mode will change the different uh, fields that are required in order to process that. So this first mod mode here, it's called Modify Intensity. And what this is designed to do is to give you a chance to modify how intense a particular LUT is. So for example, you go on the internet and you find a LUT that you really like, but you find that its effect is just a little bit too strong, or maybe it's not strong enough. Uh, what this particular tool does is allows you to dial that effect back or, or crank it up, if that's what you're looking for. When the site first comes up, it starts here on this Modify Intensity tab, and that's the one we're going to be taking a look at here first. This is the one that allows us to dial up or dial back the level of intensity of a particular LUT. Now, let me give you one particular example here. So if I pull up DaVinci Resolve here, by the way, there's a free version of this, so if you're looking for a tool that allows you to do coloring, uh, the free version is actually quite powerful. Uh, just go to blackmagic blackmagicdesign.com to download that. Uh, so I've, what I've got here... If you watch, see my other video, it'll make sense why I have this particular shot. But I'm going to take and apply a LUT to this. This is one from a company called Small HD. They're pretty well known for their monitors. They, they make some LUTs available on their website. So in this first node, I've preloaded one that they call the matrices. And this is designed to mimic the look of the movie The Matrix from a few years ago. If you remember that movie, it had a, a very a distinctive green cast to, to it throughout. And what they've done is they created this LUT that you can drop on your video in order to give it a similar look. Now, if, if, if I see this and I look at it and I think, you know what, I like that, it's just a little bit too strong. What you can do is we can load that LUT uh, into the LUTMath.com website and change the intensity of it. So let me minimize this and we'll go back to the website and we'll actually do just that. So I'm going to click on Choose File here, and then I'm going to open up this one called The Matrices. Uh, this is a free LUT they have on their website, so you can go and download that from smallhd.com. So we're going to choose that original file, then we're going to come over to this intensity value here, and we're going to dial it back to 60%. You say, you know, I like it, it's just a little bit too strong, so I want it to be 60% of what it was. So once I've chosen those, I can come here and just hit the Submit button, and my web browser will upload that file to the site, and the site will do the processing, and then it'll immediately come back and tell it to download the file. So I've got, I'm have got, i going to save that with the same file name with a, with a 60 on the end there to indicate that it's 60%, so I can hit Save. And I already had a file there, but I'm just going to overwrite that. Now, with that done, um, I'm going to go into DaVinci Resolve and force it to refresh its list of of LUTs, and so I'm going to Project Settings, the keyboard shortcut is Shift-9, and on the Color Management tab, I'm going to click on the Update List button, and that's going to crank away for a minute there, it's going to reload all the LUTs that are in its designated folder. Okay, and it's done, so we'll click, click on Save, and now I'm going, to I'm going to turn off this node with the original effect, and then I'm going to come over here to the second node, and I'm going to load in that modified LUT that I just created, so I've got it under a folder called DJ for me, for my name, and there it is. The small HD movie look, the matrices, 60. So this one is 60% of the original effect. There, now we look at it. Uh, it still has that very distinctive green look to it, but it's not near as strong as it was. So 
and disable that one and then re-enable the original and you can see that that one is considerably darker and the green cast is much more distinctive so between the two so so that's uh, one use for the modify intensity uh, if we look at this drop down here on intensity though and you scroll down you notice that there are actually negative numbers in here uh, and the reason you might want to do that is, say for example, you've shot some footage, accidentally applied a what, and you realize that you made a mistake. Uh, and you don't have the original footage anymore for whatever reason. Well, you can take apply a negative percentage, and that basically undoes what has been done to that LUT. So it reverses the effect of the LUT. And so if you wanted to completely remove one, or at least as best you can, you choose a negative 100, or if, say, if you want to dial it back, Say, take, say for example, we had used this original matrices on some footage, rendered it, lost the original clip, and we wanted to dial back the intensity a little bit, we can set that to negative 40, and that will be effectively the same as doing the original process at 60%. So, so that's that. Now, that said, uh, we can move on to the next feature on the site, which is Merge to LUTs. A lot of video tools will actually allow you to apply multiple LUTs to a video. So why would you ever want to do a merge? Well, there are a number of reasons. First of all, not every piece of software or every piece of hardware does. Uh, I use the Blackmagic Design SDI to HDMI uh, 12 gig converter to apply LUT to footage live, but it will only process one LUT file at a time. So if I want to process if I want to include the look of multiple LUTs, I've got to do, go through a merge process. Now you can do that in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it certainly does that, and other tools will as well. But uh, this it's just a little easier here. You take the two files, say these are the two files that I want, merge them, and then it creates one LUT. Uh, the other reason you might want to do it is to reduce processing power. It's required. Uh, LUTs are somewhat intensive on your graphics card or your CPU. When, when rendering. So if, you, if you've got five or six LUTs applied, uh, you're doing a lot more processing than you might necessarily need to do. So by using this tool on, on the LUTmath.com site, you can merge two LUT files into one, and the effect of both of those will be included. It also has an option on here, when we look at it, to change the intens intensity of the second LUT that's being applied. So, the second tab here on the site, Merge Two LUTs, and we have the ch opportunity to choose two different cube files, and then set the intensity of the second one. So basically, this is a base LUT file that we want to include. Now, what we want to do here, I'm going to do something that's kind of interesting. So I'm going to take our matrices 60 that we created a moment ago, and then I'm going to take another LUT that I've created. Uh, let's call this one Desaturate 50. Well, we'll use the Desaturate 50. So this basically takes the colors and desaturates by 50%. So I'm going to take that and use that as the second LUT. And in this case, I want the intensity to be 100%, but if you wanted to choose something else, you certainly can. So I'll go ahead and click on Submit. And it's gonna upload those files and crank on it for a minute, and then come back and download a new file. And we'll call this Matrix Desaturated 50. And we'll save that. And then once again, I'll pull up Resolve, go into Project Settings, update the list of LUTs and I'll crank away for a minute and then I'll click on the save button and now I come on to the second clip right click and say 3D LUT DJ and then we have we should have one in here called matrix desaturated 50 so we'll click on that and now you can see that all the colors in that have been desaturated by 50 percent in addition to applying that same matrix 60 LUT that we had applied before very simple to operate, just basically provide two LUT files. Now, if you need to merge multiple, uh, if there's a demand for that, I can modify the site to add additional, additional uh, places to put LUTs in there. But you can take the output of merging two, make that the new base, and then add another. So it's a multi-step process, but, uh, but it does work. So if you wanted to merge four, five, or six, you can just do it um, one, of the, one at a time. Take the output of each step and put the, move, move that into the base LUT for the next step. So, so, anyway, that's that. Uh, the, the third feature on the website, and I'll go into a lot more detail in another video, but this one allows you to take the look of two different cameras and make them match. A perfect example of that is when I'm shooting live video, my main camera is a Sony PXWZ150, and it's got a really nice look to it. And it's got just enough punch, just enough saturation, just enough contrast to be very pleasing. Um, 
but I also use a Sony PTZ camera called the SRG 300 SE. Uh, it's the colors coming out of it are, I'll just say, they're not great. They're good, but they're not great. And especially, particularly in oranges and reds, they tend to either go a little too orange or a little too magenta. And so what I've done is I've profiled those two cameras. The other video talks about that. And then you've taken those profiles and I can run them through the LUTMath.com site to produce a new LUT, which makes my PTZ Sony look very similar to my Z150. They actually match quite nicely uh, after the process has been done. So just very quickly, we'll, we'll run through that process here. Uh, the other video I, I've, I'm posting shows the process how I created these correction LUTs, but uh, I'll just give a very quick demonstration here. So the first LUT that we want to choose here is the profile that's created for the 300SE. That's the PTZ camera whose look I don't like and I want to replace it with something else. Now the bottom uh, area here we can choose the LUT of the that's produced, a correction LUT from the camera that we want to mimic. And so I'm going to choose the Sony's Z150 Picture Profile 2. That one has, has the look that I like. In this case, I'm going to leave the intensity at 100%, but if you only wanted to go part way or you wanted to really crank it up, you could certainly do that here. So I've, once I've got those files chosen, I'll click on the Submit button. It'll crank away at it here for a minute, and then it'll allow me to save that file. And I click on Save, and then I can upload that file into a piece of hardware that processes LUTs, or I can just use that in a timeline of a video editor. Uh, it does a pretty good, pretty good job. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It definitely gets you in the right ballpark of making sure that two cameras look the same. So, so there you go. That's kind of a summary of what the whatmath.com site currently offers. Again, this is a free service provided by DJP. Uh, anybody can use it. You don't have to even register for an account to use it. You just authenticate that you're a person and then provide the cube files that you want to process and tell the site how you want to do it. Uh, currently, as of this taping, the site supports uh, cube files. Uh, 3D only uh, in 33 uh, point or 65 point. Uh, if there's demand for other formats, let me know. You can go to the DJP website and leave me a comment there. But that's, considering that Cube is the, by far the most popular file format, I figured it makes sense to start there. So um, anyway, I uh, do appreciate you guys watching. If you have questions or comments, be sure and leave those down below. I do try and answer those as best I can. Uh, be sure and also like and subscribe. If you're not a normal viewer of this channel, most of the content is related to live video production, but it kind of covers the gamut of all sorts of stuff that have to do with video. Uh, so uh, most recently I've been demonstrating the creation of a live production trailer that I've been building, which is nearing completion. So anyway, do appreciate you guys watching, and we'll talk to you later.